Hazards are, without a doubt, one of singles Pokémon's most important tools, and also subsequently something most VGC players might not even know exists. Hazards in Pokémon refers to moves that affect the user's Pokémon upon being switched in immediately. Hazards were first introduced all the way back in Pokémon Gold and Silver, with the first move being Spikes, a ground-type move that would make all grounded Pokémon take 12.25% damage upon switch-in. I'd like to think that, back in 1999, Game Freak saw how fat they were making every Pokémon with the introduction of max EVs in every stat and leftovers being the only good item, and knew that an entry hazard to subsidize the damage would be necessary. But being honest, they probably weren't thinking that far ahead. Spikes completely control the GSC metagame, with almost every single team opting for a Cloister or Fortress, and almost every single team opting for a Rapid Spinner to clear said hazards, including Starmie and also Cloister or Fortress. Due to the nature of every Pokémon in GSC being so hard to kill, games will often progress just through laying a spike and spamming Roar or Whirlwind on switches to rack up damage, hence making the few airborne Pokémon with competitive stats, Zapdos and Skarmory, so so good. In Gen 3, spikes were changed to now stack up to three possible layers, with the first layer being the same as it was in Gen 2, and the next two layers both adding 6.25% damage respectively instead of another 12.25% as the first one does. Considering this though, spikes are not actually as prevalent in Gen 3 as they are in Gen 2. Don't get me wrong, Skarmory is widely considered a top 5 Pokémon and the best spiker in the tier with Fortress and Cloyster both having some viability as well, but teams with spikes are probably closer to about 75% in usage, compared to the almost 100% play it sees in GSC. My best explanation for this is that spikes are a bit less necessary for teams to make progress, as defensive tools have been decrept and offensive tools have been power crept, such as items like Choice Band, abilities like Sandstream, and generally strong new Pokémon, all being prevalent for teams to make progress with. Generation 4 is where Hazards really got turned up to a new level, and Rorik himself would introduce the single most competitively dominant move in every Pokémon gen to follow, that being Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock, upon being set, does damage to Pokémon with Rock-type effectiveness, which can result in 50% to 4x weak Pokémon, 25% to 2x weak Pokémon, 12.25% to neutral Pokémon, 6.25% for half-weak Pokémon, and 2.25% for quarter-weak Pokémon. Unlike Spikes, Stealth Rock had a huge learn pool, being learned by almost every ground rock or steel type, as well as a ton of other seemingly random Pokémon, like just about any psychic type legendary or blobus fatmon. Not only were rocks super easy to fit onto any team archetype, but the overall damage output being huge on rock weak mons pushed a few types out of the metagame more, such as Ice and Fire, and made for a perfect pair with Spikes due to the fact that flying types, which were immune to Spikes, would now be weak to rocks, to make up for the fact. Results of Stealth Rock being introduced and taught so liberally was a huge influx on hyper offense teams and faster offensive teams being made viable, no doubt also helped by the power creep of DPP as a whole. Teams would often tunnel in on using a lead hazard setter like Azel for Aerodactyl to prevent opposing Stealth Rocks through taunt, while also setting Stealth Rocks of one's own. Stealth Rock wasn't the only hazard introduced in Gen 4 at that, with Toxic Spikes also being introduced this generation. Toxic Spikes poison any foe who switch in, and upon setting two, that poison would actually become toxic instead. However, as the learned pool for Toxic Spikes is pretty minuscule, and the efficacy of this move is very hit or miss due to the fact that many Pokémon are unaffected by poison, and poison types remove Toxic Spike on switch in, this hazard was never too overly prevalent in any metagame. Still, it does show up fairly commonly in DPP, with Roserade being Offense's main setter and Nato Queen being Defense's main setter. Generation 5 introduced no new hazards to the game, but did introduce the single best dual hazard setter in Ferrothorn. Couple that with Gen 5 introducing Permarain to weaken Ferrothorn's fire type weakness, and Ferrothorn being great on sand to combat dragon types like Latios, and it's impossible to play black and white OU without spikes running around everywhere. As the generations go on, the general pool of Pokémon with Rapid Spin have almost completely fallen off in viability, with Starmie being the only viable one from old generations. Excadrill's inclusion does help, but thanks to Black and White having a new good spin blocker in Jellicent to match that, the tier is naturally dominated again by dual hazards. So much so that one of the best team archetypes in the entire format is a team that has four Pokémon immune to spikes, in Gliscor, Skarmory, Alakazam, and Reuniclus, the latter two by means of the ability Magic Guard. 
Generation 6 decided to combat the weak pool of viable Pokémon with Rapid Spin by updating an older move, that one being Defog, into a move that could also clear hazards when using it. Due to Defog having a pretty wide pool of Pokémon that can access it, Game Freak balanced it out by causing Defog to remove the hazards the user has set as well. In the early days of Generation 6, Hazard Stack lost a lot of steam as teams could now use Defoggers, like Zapdos and the Lotties, to undo hazard progression. But, as Oras developed into a tier riddled with Hyper Offense and Spike Stack balances that worked to pressure and trap Defoggers, it has ultimately ended up as a format completely controlled by Hazard Stack teams again. One of the other primary reasons for this is due to the introduction of Sticky Web, a hazard that slows down all grounded foes by one stage. Sticky Web makes for an amazingly potent tool on Hyper Offense, as slower setup sweepers can outspeed common revenge killers and become unstoppable in a sweeping rampage, including abusers like Manaphy and Mega Scizor. Generation 7 is the first generation where Game Freak decided to really cut back on the prominence of hazards, as they must have considered hazards to be problematic. The means to this were achieved through introducing a much wider pool of Pokémon to the move Defog, including Pokémon that it frankly makes no canonical sense on, such as Superior, the new Tapus, Rotom Wash, and more. Thanks to this innovation, Hazard Spam teams took a bit of a backseat here. That being said though, Spikes on Greninja and Ferrothorn are still a great way to make progress against fatter teams that rely on Pokémon like Toxapex and Tornadus T spamming Regenerator to dry out games. Speaking of Toxapex, it being one of the only viable Poison-type Pokémon to learn Toxic Spikes since Gen 4, does reflect that Toxic Spikes show up occasionally in Generation 7. The strategy is usually paired with a Pokémon like Combine Megalodios to take advantage of the fact that you can easily poison Dark-types like Tyranitar. Last and also least, we arrive at Generation 8, otherwise known as Boots OU. The reason it's known as Boots OU? Well, because of this item right here. Heavy Duty Boots. Game Freak went all out with combating Hazard Power Creep in Generation 8 by introducing an item that completely negates hazard effects entirely. This has resulted in Hazard Spam teams becoming almost unplayable. New viability in a lot of Pokémon otherwise gated by their typing being Stealth Rock weak, such as Volcarona, Dragonite, and Victini. And Regenerator users like the Slowpoke families and Tornadus T being completely broken. Not only do defensive Pokémon love the ability to dodge out on all hazard damage when switching in, but Boots also give Revenge Killers a lot more leniency in how many turns they can stay on the field. Pokémon such as Zerara, Weavile, and Tornadus T Overall though, this has resulted in much slower games in which progress is much harder to make until boots can be removed through knockoffs and tricks to make hazard damage actually last. Taking a look at the wide scope of how hazards warp play, and it's very easy to see which generations Game Freak had wanted hazards to be strong and weak in, as the developers at least had some idea of how things had been operating in competitive play. That being said, I will always take Game Freak for creating heavy duty boots, 